Hello everyone. Today I'll show you how to use the Splasher 3 Photoshop action. And before we get started, let's view a few examples. With this action, you need to open your main image and mark your subject area like this. And then once you run the action, you'll get something like this. So the effect is totally customizable. You have multiple color effects and also various layers of splatter and brush strokes which you can customize. So this is another example with the background turned black. You can place any color background on, on behind your image and we'll get into these details once we run the action. So the action also provides uh, 15 color presets which you can apply with a single click. So here you can see one of the examples. Here is another example and this is the subject area marked and this is the final result. So uh, you can hide different uh, splatter elements the brush strokes or the droplets to create uh, different patterns like this is a cleaner look with the uh, strong brush strokes hidden and this is just a minimal look with everything spread and watercolor elements hidden in the splatters on only you can customize this look even and here is another example zoom in a bit on dark background few more examples okay so let's get started Let's uh, use this image. I'll be running this action on two images, one by one, and then I'll go into details about and uh, describe all the layers and groups that are created. So before we get started, we need to take care of a few things, and those are your image mode should be RGB color and 8 bits per channel, and then click this flyout menu and uh, click panel options make sure you use default masks on fill layers and add copy to copy layers and groups are checked next your image should be a background lock layer if it's uh, something like this uh, you have you might have done any other operation like cropping or anything which turns it into a non background layer like this layer 0 or anything else you need to turn it to a background layer to do that go to layer new uh, before that select layer and then go to layer, new, and background from layer. So it will turn it into a background layer. So uh, let's uh, add our files, the action brush, and the pattern files. To do that, go to file, open, and navigate to the splasher main files, which comes in a download package. And select the splasher three brushes, the patterns, and the main action file, and hit open. So all those files are now loaded into your Photoshop, and you can confirm this one by one let's uh, confirm our action to do that go to window actions and here as you can see the action file has loaded we have two different variations of the action one is for photoshop cs3 cs4 cs5 cs6 cc cc 2014 and 2015.1 and the other version is for cc 2015.5 cc 2017-2018 and all newer versions so make sure uh, to check your Photoshop version before you run and you run the correct version of the action. And let's uh, confirm our brushes also. To do that, go to Edit, Preset, Preset Manager, and if you keep your brush selected and go down, so you can see Splash of Three Brushes is there in the panel. And if you're using older version of Photoshop, you won't get this folded structure, but you will get these brushes. Uh, Add it to your brush panel as a whole, and if you hover over them, you can see this splash of brushes there also. And so, to confirm our patterns, I select the pattern from here, and as you can see, here are the patterns splash it to pattern one and pattern two. So, now we are uh, good to go with the other steps. And uh, one most important thing is that select your brush tool and make sure your mode is normal your opacity is 100% and flow is 100% these three, three things must be set like that otherwise it will not work properly and also regarding image size 
This action works best with the images from size around 2000 pixels to 4000 pixels. Use high resolution images and uh, you can try and experiment with other sizes but uh, this works best with images having the shorter axis whichever it is with our height uh, from the range of 2000 to 4000 pixels. And so with those done let's mark our subject area to do that create a new layer above background and rename it as subject and subject must be in lowercase make sure this is in lowercase for the action to work properly now you need to mark your main subject area where you want to apply the effect uh, you can mark it in two way you can create a clean precise selection around your image or you can just use a soft round brush and randomly or uh, uh, around mark the subject area uh, in a not so precise manner so I'll show you both of them you can select any color select the subject area and I'm marking over it I'm using the square brackets on my keyboard to adjust the brush size and I'm just brushing over the main subject area I'm not being too precise here Take your time and brush over the area where you want the effect to be. So the area you brush on will be visible only and all the other area from your image uh, will not be there in the final effect. So I'll keep it just like that to create a more abstract kind of look. So uh, I'm good to run the action here and you can check your Photoshop version. I'm using this is 2018 so I'll be running this one and uh, just before you run the action make sure your brush tool opacity and floor set to 100% with uh, this checked. So let's select our action and hit play. So it will take some time for the action to finish. We'll get back when it's done. Okay, so the action has finished running and before we go into details about all these elements created, let's run this action on another image. Let's select this one. Like uh, before, let's again create a subject layer. Make sure subject is in lowercase. And now I'll do a precise selection over this subject and not a random area marking that I was doing in the other image. So the objective of this second run is to show you the effect of uh, a precise selection. So I'm selecting the background layer and I'm using quick selection to quickly select over the main subject. You can use any other method that you like, like pen tool, magic wand, anything that you feel good. So that's more or less selected and let's uh, fill this one with any color. Make sure you are again selecting the subject layer now and just checking a brush and a color and I'll fill this in so I'll just deselect the selection and with my brush opacity and flow again I'm checking if they are 100% and selecting the action and I'll hit play so we'll fast forward again and get back when it's done Okay, so the action has finished up playing and let's zoom in a bit. So 
So this is the final effect that you'll get. Let's zoom in on the first example also. Now let's go over the customization option that we have. So starting from here, these are the background elements and if you expand the group, you can see there's the paper texture. You can hide it to get a more cleaner look without the grainy paper effect on the background. And here is the image background color. What it does is uh, you can change this one to affect the underlay color on the main image area only. So I'd prefer if it's, uh, it's kept white and you can change the background color. So you are keeping it white, so it's the image area is uh, kept white and the background is changing color. So that's the whole point of this image background color and uh, you can change it to any color. As you can see, here's the black one for a darker background. So I'll keep this one for white right now and these are uh, the elements in the, inside the background elements. So next we have our background splatter elements and these are the splatter water droplets, the uh, color dark droplets, strokes, paint really effect over the background area other than the main image. So you can uh, just hide this one to get a more cleaner minimal look. As you can see this is just the painting on the main subject area that you have marked and with some uh, abstract splatter effect so you can keep this one if you're looking for more minimal kind of approach but let's see what we have got over here so here are different uh, strokes the first one is the near strokes which are these dark strokes around the subject and uh, we have uh, separated uh, layers for this and what you can do is you can select the layer mask and you can take a brush so a soft front brush is by default selected after the action runs and you can select color black from here and you can paint on the mask to hide parts of this like as you can see it's hiding so I can select this mask also and it will hide this part so you, you can hide parts of this uh, uh, strokes that you don't want so right now I'll undo this one quickly and these are the splatter mid so they kind of create a uh, chaining tone between the two uh, patterns the our peripheral one and the nearer one so it goes same for this one also you can uh, paint on the layer mask with black to hide this uh, effects and here is our splatter uh, sprayed the main uh, splatter area on the uh, all the region except the main image so you can toggle the visibility and customize yourself the look that you are trying to achieve and also what you can do is you can simply hide one of those folders to get a more cleaner look like this next we have our main image elements and this is the core image layers so here we have our shadow elements and so these are basically the bulk of the image and i'd recommend uh, that these are kept as it is so these are the mid-tone layers and this is the highlight layers so here we have the splatter elements also and if you want uh, don't want the splatter elements you can tone down the opacity of these splatter elements also so same goes for the other splatter elements so these are the mid-tone splatter elements you can tone down the opacity and if you don't want this pattern to be on certain areas maybe like on this eyes so what you can do is you can create a layer mask and on this mask paint with black as i show you just a few moments back next we have our additional elements and they kind of form the main detail regions and the finer detail regions so I recommend these are also kept as it is and here we have the white splatters uh, over the main image you can select the layers you can also select this move tool and move them around as you can see you can easily move them around and also you can uh, right click and select free transform if you want to modify this splatter elements 
next we have our toning so these are the default tonings and I would recommend that these are kept as it is you can add just the levels and the brightness contrast from the overall adjustments so here we have the 15 color effects which you can apply with a single click so you can just turn on the visibility of these layers and they will apply just with a single click Next we have our overall adjustments. So here at first we have our brightness and contrast layer. Next we have our overall levels. Next we have our overall curves. overall hue saturation you can change the hue saturation to create a cool uh, psychedelic kind of abstract kind of color effect overall gradient map here we have our overall gradient fill You can change the angle of the gradient and also the size the scaling of the gradient. And next we have our solid color field. So the same customization options also goes for this one. And I hope you like this effect. See you soon.